Yeah. Yeah. Okay, George, welcome back to Sheffield United. Why have you come here tonight? Uh, thanks for inviting me. You know, uh, we saw you a couple of weeks ago when uh, I signed for Chesterfield. And uh, I was very, very pleased you invited me for the event. And uh, and I'm quite happy, you know. And so I learned a lot of things about the, the first black player. Uh, the goalkeeper, I didn't know about that. And then Laurie Cunningham was the first black player to play in England under 21. So I was uh, impressed. What did the name Laurie Cunningham mean to you as a young footballer back in Marseille in France? Uh, like I said before, I remember, I think I was probably 12, 13 years, ago, 13 years old. And uh, I remember Laurie Cunningham used to play for my hometown and my my team, you know, at the time, and, and I saw him uh, playing. He was a skillful player. And uh, in Marseille, we always love skillful players. We had uh, some big players in the 70s with Brazilian players, you know. And uh, I had uh, good memories uh, about him. But it's about 25 years ago, I suppose. But I can't remember, he was a good player. So you're back at Bramalena ground that you played at yourself. Did you realise that Cunningham had made his England debut here as the first black England international? Uh, what do you mean by that, John? You've played on that pitch. Does yeah. it seem strange that it, it's so, so much of a first in English football? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a, it's, I was a, for me, it's a pleasure to play here. I played here and to see a big name like him, you know, Louis Cunningham, play for in Sheffield United ground. It was... Uh, Amazing, you know, and at the time, 30 years ago, uh, big racism, you know. Uh, uh, I suppose it was quite difficult for him, but I, f I, f I think he was a, a strong man, and you have to be a strong man to to do uh, to do that. And I grew up on a, probably the same situation. I've just had a word with Brian Dean. We had the same difficult uh, situation. We have to prove to the white community we're strong enough and good enough to play in uh, in this in this game or any job in the world as well like a lawyer a dentist or doctor it's quite difficult for a colour finally you're back living in Sheffield it's funny how things come around and you've signed for Chesterfield how do you feel is, is everything going okay across there uh, I've been here for two months uh, hopefully I will get something better next couple of weeks and I'm really really enjoying it. I'm, I'm pleased to come back in the, in Sheffield because I had a good good time in here uh, I've got some few friends in here so always a pleasure to come back to Sheffield United and always have a good chat like with yourself or Mick or Andy you know uh, good memories in here but not the West Brom game but uh, always a good time to come back here because every time I play against Sheffield United had a good good reception with the fans and the people have been working five years ago. So it was great. I enjoyed it. George, it's always a pleasure to welcome you. Brian Dean. Um, I used to play for Sheffield United, uh, Leeds United, uh, Middlesbrough, West Ham, Benfica, um, Sunderland, Leicester. I don't think I've mentioned anybody twice there. Okay, right. And um, what did football mean to you while you were growing up? Uh, well, it, for me, you know, I grew up um, as as most uh, as most black people did um, in a in a you know in a community where you know my, my parents were first generation, so they came to the country and we were looking to integrate, you know, and, and everybody loves sport, and for us, um, you know, that was what we were naturally gifted at. Um, my um, heroes, <coughs> funnily enough, at the time were. Um, the, the West the three black players at West Brom, right. um, the three you know degrees. the three degrees. Yeah. Um, I can even remember when they had the picture in the newspaper with the three degrees, and one of them matched up with Brendan Batson, and Laurie Cunningham, and Cyril Regis. So um, you know, the three of them played a massive role in mass, my development and my wanting to be a professional footballer. And also, um, I'm sure if you talk to the likes of Ian Wright. Les Ferdinand, those types of players, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. Oh, excellent. And in terms of um, your experiences of football and yeah. racism in football, yeah. um, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's it's for, for me. Um, you know, I I grew up in a in a I grew up in a period of playing where, you know, a lot of things were said, 
and um, there wasn't a lot done about it. You know, I'd be I'd be watching um, I'd be watching games on television, and you know, you'd hear the monkey chants and the commentators on telly are just ignoring it, and it, it kind of like it, it upsets me a little bit now because what what happens now is that you know if it, if it, if you hear anything like that on television, they jump on top of it, whereas. I don't think any of them were brave enough back in those days to turn round and make a point of of saying, you know, this is wrong. You know, it, it, they just kind of like let it. They just rolled with it, whether they thought it was right or wrong. Um, nothing was ever said, and that, and that disappoints me about some of the commentators. Okay, um, and in terms of, I'm just going to stop here a minute. Right, Simon, you guys, can you all be quiet, please? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Right. Uh, in terms of young people and yeah. learning <coughs> about black footballers' contributions and history mm -hmm. in football, do you think that's important? I think it's massively important because it's helped black people um, integrate into this society. Um, and I, I think that, you know, it's it's okay, you know, you look at, look at the television now and you see most teams have two or three black players in the team, but I think that a lot of... Um, a lot of people, a lot of kids growing up now, should actually try and go back into the archives and, and look at where it all started, look at how players came through and, and you know, see how difficult and try and imagine how difficult it was back in those days for players to break through. Mm -hmm. yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Sure. So thank you very pleasure. much. Pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Are you a fan or a footballer? I'm a fan. You're a fan. Excellent. Yeah. Which team do you support? Um, as, well, I don't support a particular team. Okay. I just like football in general. Okay, excellent. Well, like I said, I used to come down to Babylon a lot. So All right. Now, now okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are your earliest and fondest memories of football? Oh, football was a new thing to me. Um, when I came to England in 1967, I think that was the first time I've ever seen football played. Right. So it was like, it was like a fascination, really. Okay. You know, from that early age. Right. Okay, and um, what did football mean to you while you were growing up? It means a lot because that was the time where you get to meet friends and at the time where we lived there, on Peter Street where we used to live, um, we used to get like families and we used to have families who were like, big families, so there were 12 of my family, so there were like six boys. So we used to have challenge each other to play football too. So right. basically, it was so it was a family. It was, every, it was a family thing then. It was everything. It was everything. Yeah. Brilliant. And what did players like Laurie Cunningham contribute to football? Oh, to me in them them time, I think he contributed a lot. Mm -hmm. As far as um, I was concerned, mm -hmm. and the, the the guys of who I used to knock about with, and well, the guy in Pittsman, yeah. he's contributed a lot because when he was um, announced that he would play for England. You know, it was it was everything. All those guys said, "Oh wow, look, there's a black man there, and he's gonna play for England." And you know, it was it was it was a big thing. Right. It was a big thing. You know, it was for everybody. It was it was in them times because it wasn't there wasn't a lot of black footballers then. <laughs> and to see him in an England shirt, it was it was special. Something you can still remember. Yes, it was special. It was special. Excellent. And what are your recollections of Laurie's visit to Sheffield? Uh, when he came. When it, when it first came, right, um, when, we, when we found out that he was coming, we were actually training right. down at Pomona Street and we found out that he was coming. Yeah. And when we found out he was coming on the, I think it was a Tuesday night, I think it was, if the memory served me right. After we finished training, you know, we literally ran from the training ground, uh, which is about, that's about two miles. So we did a two mile sprint right. to get to the, um, the hub. To the hub to see To get him. to meet him, yeah. Oh, wonderful. And when he was there, you know, we just like, when we saw him, we were just like, cops, man. Because obviously you don't know what to say to him, what to ask him, but, you, know, <laughs> you know. And how did you find him? What was uh, it like? Oh, it was nice. It was nice. It was nice. Okay. It was nice. It was pleasant. Okay. It was pleasant. And I think when he came, I think there was a lot more black guys in Sheffield right. who wanted to play football yeah. at those times. Wonderful. So in other words, it was a hero. Oh, excellent. It was a big hero at them times. Oh, good. Big hero. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. All right. Thank okay. you very much. All right. <laughs> thank you. What's your name, please? My name is Pablo Joseph. Pablo Joseph. Are you a fan or a footballer? Well, both a footballer and a fan. Excellent. And what well, team do you support? I support Arsenal. Arsenal. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll keep that one a little quiet. <laughs> All right. And what are your earliest or fondest memories of football? Um, well, I packed in playing five years ago. Okay, so only recently? Yeah, well, I'm 50 now, so 
only recently? Yes, it's recently, but I still enjoy the game because I still, you know, train a girls' football team. Right. And I still referee. So I'm still, you know, put back a lot of the football which I used to play and then put it back to the kids. Excellent. And um, what did players like Laurie Cunningham contribute to football? Laurie Cunningham was just like a, he was like a god to us youngsters, you know, knowing that he was the first black player to be playing for England. And he was just like a, a big, you know, just a... You know, when we used to just watch him, it just like, because we know he visited the hub when he first opened it, it was just like, everybody was just in awe, mm -hmm. knowing that he'd come to Sheffield and open our club, yeah. and we are then watching him on TV, it was brilliant. Okay, was brilliant. and what did it do for you as me? a result? Yeah. Oh, it just made me want to play football more and get out of the end, just, you know, play and enjoy the sport, yeah. which is what we all want to do. Okay, and do you think ch things have changed for black footballers since then? It's changed, but um, you still get the one and two little niggly things, but it's, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. In our days, we thought we used to play a lot harder and the weather was more, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a lot more bad weather and freezing conditions that we used to play in hailstones and everything. Mm -hmm. But, oh, we, we just love to play. We just love to play and it's like, me and our father, my daughter plays at football, she's 11. And so we just try to, you know, install the discipline and, you know, just enjoy the game, just enjoy it. Okay, and on that note, um, is there anything you tell young people about learning about black footballers and their presence in football? Well, Do you think it's important that they know about Yes, they, they should. All the black kids should know another role model because my role model is not only was Lloyd, but it was Pelle. Because the only time I... Wagged school, that's what we used to call it then, was 1972 when he came to Sheffield Wednesday right. and Santos, and that was the only time I wagged school right. to go and watch Pelly play. Right, so you think it's important oh, that young people very important. learn about yeah. the, the very black important. footballers oh, and their oh, contribution? Most definitely. Okay, excellent. Most definitely. Well, thank you, Pablo. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. okay. Right, can you tell me your name, please? Uh, my name is Milton Samuels. Right, are you a fan or a footballer? Um, I'm a fan. You're a fan, okay. Yeah. And what team do you support? Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday. All my life. All right, we'll I'll keep never that change. <laughs> I know I'm in a United place, but yes. <laughs> what are your earliest and fondest memories of football? Um, my earliest memories was, yes, I used to go to a lot of football matches, but I think it was the night um, when I met Laurie Cunningham. Right. Um, we knew that he was going to be selected to play for England at Sheffield United's okay. ground and we were told to actually bring the football team that I run to, to the hub right. and um, so that you could meet them. Okay. And I think that was the highlight of everything that you've, you've actually done. You knew that somebody achieved. Yeah. And the young players that I had at the time, because they're all youngsters from the youth club, was playing in the league so that we could teach him to expire to where he's actually gone to. And that was... Um, my highlights. And do you think that it's important to still do things like that now? Oh yeah, I, I think it's important that um, young players, black or white, but at the moment young black men, yeah. that they still have that chance to aspire to see their role models. There isn't enough of that and we need to make sure that um, the players that we've got who are role models to come back into the community like he did to actually meet them. So what do you think players like Laurie Cunningham contributed to football? Well, yes he was a role model and one of the things that uh, as he went on and got um, noticed um, he, he did a lot for his communities I was told, he actually went round to the communities, he actually went into the communities and talked to people mm -hmm. Um, like he did when he came to the like hub. Like he did when he came to the hub. Yeah. So, you know, it's those sort of things that help young black men to think that they can aspire because they're not too far away mm -hmm. um, from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. And is it important, final question, that we carry on doing things like this, like teaching young people about contribution that black football has made to football? Well, I think yeah. it's important. I, I mean, I still, as old as I am now, still run the football team. Yeah. And um, it's something that we actually do teach yeah. our youngsters. Okay. So, yes, I think it's important. Excellent. Is there anything else you want to tell us about his visit? or? Well, no, I think I think the younger players, who, the, the lads who actually met him, and as I say, I, I knew how I felt, but he was 
the young men who met him and felt that there's something that they wanted to strive to. Yeah. You know, at the time when we met him, there was a lot of young men who was who's got really fantastic skills mm -hmm. and wanted to move on, and we actually moved them on yeah. um, and to higher clubs. And some like Gilly, who you've just met, should have gone professional. I don't know if you mentioned that, but he should have gone through to be a professional player. His brother, yes. who's younger than him, we actually got him to Southampton. You know, and he got there and he went training and he went through the training camp, but then came home because of the racism. Yeah. You know, and you know, and it's those sort of things that they had in, in those days that we needed to to be kicking this sort of thing, to be kicking racism out of football so that young players could actually get through. And do you think a lot has changed in terms of racism in football over the years? Um, Have you seen a lot of changes? But I've seen a lot of changes, um, and, I've, and I know that there's there's still more improvement to come. Okay. So it's um, something that we need to still we, keep we doing. need to keep knocking on the door and let people know that it's you know racism still exists and we need to kick it out. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Samuels. you. Bye bye. Thanks. Can you tell me your name, please? Uh, Des Smith. Are you a fan or a footballer? Both. 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 Okay. Yeah. Which team do you support? Sheffield Wednesday. I'm gonna keep that one quiet as well. What are your earliest and fondest memories of football? Earliest memory, I think, basically when I was transferred from Wadsley Bridge to Middlewood right. for ten pounds. Oh right, oh right, okay. So right. I was quite proud of that. Right, and what did football mean to you while you were growing up? Almost as much as cricket, because being from the West Indies, you play quite a lot of cricket, and I could have played cricket professionally. Um, and in fact, I was just saying that I used to come to the training in the nets here at right. Bromwell Lane. Oh, uh, years ago, and I could have played for Yorkshire, mm -hmm. but I wasn't born in Yorkshire. Okay. I was a West Indian. Okay, so do you uh, think that football gave you more opportunities than probably other sports? <laughs> we, we didn't actually see football as a career, actually. I mean, certainly we came here uh, in our early teens, mm -hmm. and I think our priority was education. Right. And I think our parents has always stressed education, education, education. So football for us was pretty much um, a sport. Okay pretty much fun um, so no so we didn't we certainly didn't see it as a, as a profession well okay. I didn't anyway right so what did players like Laurie Cunningham contribute to football well the first time we met him I mean and, and we met him at the hub was we were told this very young man was playing in Sheffield and playing for England and we thought god you know this guy must be pretty good and when we were told that he was coming to meet us um, you know, quite nervous because you've never met anybody that famous or popular before. And so we sort of turned up and we prepared food for him and all the football team turned up. And um, he was just an ordinary guy. I mean, he just felt very, he looked very relaxed. Uh, he was very much at home and it was just like he'd known us for years. And we had a fantastic night, it really was. And I think he really sort of inspired us to move on, to continue to play football and also to to a point whereby we actually own our own sports field now. Uh, we have a, a football team and a cricket team which is owned by the Caribbean Football Club and the club is still going very, very strongly. Oh, excellent. So do you think it's really important that young people learn about the impact that black footballers have had on football? I think it's important. I think one needs role, role models and I think <laughs> one needs needs role models and I think it's important that they can see that other people do achieve because it gives them uh, a target in a way and that they themselves if they try hard enough they can also achieve. Well that's good so uh, it's really good that you guys have still got the Caribbeans running. Well. Oh, it's, 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 it's a great club and it's one which not only offers football but it offers all other opportunities as well for example it offers jobs um, it offers quite a lot of it engages quite a lot of young people who would otherwise get involved in crime and so on. And, and it does link in very well as well with professional clubs and acad academic institutions and so on. So I think it, it provides a very useful purpose. And do you think a lot has changed in terms of <coughs> racism over the years in football? Well, it's certainly less uh, overt as it used to be, but I still go to games here and at, and at Wednesday and racism is still there and there's always a hard core there which is very very difficult to you know to convince that it's the wrong thing to do. 
but we just have to be very vigilant and make sure that we don't tolerate it and wherever we see it happens we uh, evict them or prosecute them which certainly a lot of clubs are doing nowadays. Okay, thank you guys for that. Thank you. Right, can you tell me your name please? Isaac Haywood. Are you a fan or a footballer? I'm a fan. You're a fan, excellent. Yeah. And which I've team do you support? Hmm? Which team do you support? I support Chelsea. Chelsea, we'll, we'll keep that one quiet. Why? What are your earliest or fondest memories of football? My earliest or fondest memory, when, when I used to play. Okay. Yeah, as a young boy going to school. Um, I played in school teams. Right. Um, when football was very in its early stages in Sheffield, okay. I also played for local black teams. You know? Okay. And what did players like Laurie Cunningham contribute to football? Their contribution was, you know, immense. You know, um, they were pioneers. Uh, they broke down a lot of barriers for. Um, players who you know we see today earning millions um, I've heard many players um, talk about you know they haven't experienced any form of racism in their career and um, I think people like Laurie Cunningham they they broke down a lot of those barriers and made it easy for these guys nowadays yeah? okay and how did you feel at the time when he came to Sheffield um, I didn't actually see when he came. Mm -hmm. I, I heard about it. Um, I know a lot of the guys who met him. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a very exciting time for us, you know. Um, you know, to have a black footballer of his stature um, come into our youth centre mm -hmm. in the midst of us, um, getting to meet him. Uh, talking with him, it was it was very um, immense for him. And when was that? When did he actually visit the project? Um, I think it was sometime in the 70s. Right, and what was football like then? Um, football, you mean uh, the national game, uh, professional football? In professional football, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in professional football uh, at that time, and, and I suppose um, at many different levels of football, um, one of the it was very difficult for black players. Um, in, in in my own case and in many of my own peers' case, um, we went for trials. You know, um, sent by the school to places like Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, uh, for trials. And th there's a, a type of football that black players play even from a very early age they like to play flamboyant football mm -hmm. um, in those days uh, footballers black footballers they didn't like to play in the goals right. they always liked to be outfield players they there weren't many black defenders right. so everyone was very comfortable with the ball they were very flamboyant and I think a lot of the coaches they didn't like that they wanted you to play a certain type of football, you know, up and under, you know, the British style. Mm -hmm. And I think because of that, um, a lot of um, uh, coaches or people who are responsible for recruiting players, they sort of stifled that out of black players. And, and I think that was a little bit racist myself. You know? Okay. And do you think a lot has changed since then? Um, in terms I think, of opportunities? I think, yeah, I think we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. But I think we still have a long way yet to go. Um, I think that um, we've... I mean, in terms of opportunities, there's a lot of opportunities there to become, you know, professional footballers. But I think part of that is, is, is about what black players contribute to the game. Okay. Um, the, the game is, be, is, is such a money intense uh, operation now that the, the, the practices of, of racism is, is less, you know, overt, overt yes. because black players do bring a lot to the game. Mm -hmm. You know, they have talent, 
they have a lot of personality. They, you know, they bring a lot to the game now. That managers and chairmen and the people who are responsible for the game, they, they need to have that, you know. And one last thing, do you think that young people need to learn about the history of black footballers or do you think the history should stay where it is in the history? No, they, they need to know about the history of black footballers. They need to know what black footballers suffered. Mm -hmm. um, people like Clive Best, when I first came to this country, there was a great footballer who played for West Ham. Um, they call him Clive Best, you know, and he, he suffered. Uh, a lot of racism from the crowds, um, you know, from teammates, from, you know, people in the game. And, and, and they were very steadfast and very uh, astute. And they, they kept at it. They didn't just run away. And they broke down a lot of the barriers for us. And, and players now and young people now, they need to know that, you know. And I think it will give them a different and a better perspective on the game mm -hmm. and what's expected from them as black players, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mr. Hayward. You're welcome. All right, can you tell me your name, please? I'm Clinton McCoy. Now, you a fan or a footballer? Um, uh, I'm not a footballer. Okay. You know, I never could play from from time, but I like to watch a good game of football. Okay, you know? and do you support any teams? Wow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In my heydays, I used to support, just support Sheffield Wednesday. Right, we're definitely <laughs> keeping that one quiet. <laughs> right, and but, but funny enough, mm -hmm. um, I've actually been to see more United matches than I've seen Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday play. And why is that, Clinton? Because it's just on the back. It, it's just near my yard. You okay, know? and has that got anything to do with feeling comfortable? No, because in terms of welcoming and the club. No, I think a, 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 a few of my friends used to come here quite regular when I was at school, mm -hmm. and I used to come along with them. You okay. Know? And I think during um, what was that? When I was about 1968, 69. Mm -hmm. I stopped coming to football matches because it looked fairly dangerous. Okay. You know? I remember on the back of Sheffield United ground there one day, one Saturday after a match, I can't remember who they were playing, but we came out there, boy, and quite a few lads look at us, yeah. and they was drifting our ways, you know, and we moved, you know. Okay. Right, and um, would you encourage your children now? I know you said that was in 68, 69, so, you know, 40 years later, would you encourage young people to come to games if yeah. you felt that fear? Yeah. I often bring my son here to watch a game of football. Okay, so would you think, would you say that things have changed over think, the years? Yes, it's more discipline. I mean, you, you go into a match, I mean, this is the last time I went to a football match about two years ago. Okay. And well, everybody has to be seated now, mm -hmm. isn't it? You know? Yeah. And, um, all the racist comment, people can be removed from the ground and things like that. So I think the fans are actually protected okay. a little bit. Okay. You know. And what did players like Laurie Cunningham contribute to football? It gives people a sense of that, you know, th these guys are the guys who are breaking through, you know, who broke through the football. I think they were the, they were the pioneers, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. We broke through the, 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 the barrier you know, for black people to, to play football. Because, okay. I mean, when I was coming to look at football matches, most of what I used to see was mainly white players on the field, you know. Okay, um, and do you know the young people that were at the hub when he went back mm -hmm. um, after the England game? Um, what was their general feel for his visit? What were their comments about him visiting? Because well, I'm there at the time. I'm he afraid. wasn't there at the time, okay. <laughs> Did you get any feedback or anything? Did anybody say? There was, a, there was, I, I mean, there were rumours about him coming to, coming to the hub, you mm. know, and a lot of people who wouldn't normally come there, you know, they were, they were coming to the hub on that occasion, you know, to see it, you know. Yeah. Because... So it was well received It was then. well received, yeah. Okay, right, and um, just the last thing then, um, in terms of young people and the history of black footballers, do you think it's important that they learn about it, or do you think history is just one of them things that should be kept? in the history? No, I think people should learn about what's going on you know, in all spheres, football, you know, it's all part of parcel of our growing up in our community and it's football is something that embraces everybody, you know, and the young, it, it, it's, a, it's a medium that um, brings everybody in the fold, you know, so I think it's not something you keep in the back room and 
you know, it's something you bring out to show people what's, what's around. You know. And do you think that um, by revealing the history, the young people have learnt about the struggles that some of the footballers would have had to go through? Well, of course, yeah. you know, it's part of that history. Yeah. I, I mean, people would be horrified if they... If, I mean, to understand what's going on today, you have to understand some of the feelings of those players, you know, at the time. I mean, they, can you imagine some of the insults that they go through? You know, the way people. I mean, we're talking about in the year what, 2000, yeah. people were still chucking banana skin on the field. You know, and I mean that was mild compared to what some of these players must have to put up with during those periods of time. Yeah, amazing. Okay, Clinton. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, yeah. that's thank perfect. You. That thank you.